Our next topic is a topic on resonance. And sometimes when we can draw multiple Lewis structures, what we learned in last lesson is sometimes they're not equivalent. They have different, uh, when we keep those uh, electron by uh, doing formal charges, we see that some of those Lewis structures are better than others. But sometimes when we draw more than one Lewis structure, they all have equivalent formal charges, and so we would call them equivalent Lewis structures. And when we have equivalent Lewis structures, they're called resonance structures, okay? So let's draw all the possible resonance structures that we can come up with for SO2. So we're kind of practicing our, our Lewis structure stuff here. We've got um, sulfur, which has six valence electrons. We have two oxygens. They both have six. That's 12 total for the oxygen and 18 total for the molecule. Connectivity, sulfur is the least electronegative of the bunch. So we have sulfur here, oxygen here. Um, and now we start putting those electrons in. Two, four, move to the terminal atoms. Six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. I have to put two here, 18. I'm finally getting to put some in the middle, but I have to stop before I get that sulfur happy. All right, so this sulfur isn't quite happy. So what we have to do is shift. We always shift from the outside in until we can make everybody happy. Well, he only needs two more. So we could choose to either shift from here in or we could shift from here in. Let's do both. So I want to, instead of uh, messing with this, we'll leave that there because this was where we started. I'm going to uh, shift those two over here. Eh, I'm not going to do that. That is not what I want to do. You always shift from the terminal in, okay? So we shift these two in. Well, no, let's just do it this way. All right, those two are in. Change my mind. All right, now did that make sulfur happy? Sulfur has two, four, six, eight. It didn't make oxygen unhappy. He still has two, four, six, eight. Everybody has eight, and that is a Lewis structure of SO2. Well, I could have done the same thing, but instead of shifting from the left-hand oxygen, I could have shifted from the right-hand oxygen. So here's where we were, okay? This is where we started, and now I'm gonna shift these electrons in this way. So I take two off of here, it doesn't matter which two, by the way, I could have cho chosen any of those, and shift it to here. And now everybody has eight, and I've used my 18 electrons. Now, these are equivalent, but let's prove it to ourselves. Let's do formal charges. Kind of do it quickly here. Six minus six is zero here. Six minus one, two, three, four, five is a positive one here. Six minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is a minus one here. Come down to this one. Six minus seven is a minus one. 6 minus 5 is a plus 1, and 6 minus 6 is 0. So we have equivalent formal charges. We have the more electronegative uh, atom having the negative formal charge. There's an oxygen in both places. So these are equivalent Lewis structures. So I can't say one is better than the other one. All right, we did that. We've said that one is not more favorable than the other because they have the same formal charges. Now what we would say is that these are equivalent. Okay, we can't say one's better, one's worse. They are equivalent. When you can draw more than one, well, let's just think about this. If this were the story or this were the story, we have a single bond, let's just focus on one of them. We have a single bond and we have a double bond. Now what did we learn about bond length and the number of bonds. We learned something about that in the past. You might have to flip through your pages and see about bond length versus um, the number of bonds that we have in order to answer this question, and I encourage you to do so. All right, so stop and pick an answer. All right, so if you had done, if, if this were the story, or if this were the story, let's see if I have a story, I don't have a star that's going to pop up, so I'll, I'll circle it instead. If one of these were the story, the double bond would be shorter because the more sharing you have, the shorter the bond's going to be, and the single bond would be longer. Um, but this is what they did. When they did a study of this molecule and did an X-ray diffraction study to find out where the nuclei are, what they found was actually these two bonds are exactly the same length. It's not a long one and a short one. 
they're both exactly the same length. And actually that length is about halfway between what you would expect a sulfur oxygen single bond to be and a sulfur oxygen double bond to be. So it's kind of like it's a bond and a half, one and a half bonds, okay? So actually both of them are a depiction together of the real molecule, okay? What we do, and I think what I will do is, um, well, I, can, I guess I can squeeze it in here. What we do is we put a double-headed arrow between them, okay? When we put that double-headed arrow in between them, what we're saying is, these are resonance structures of each other. These two contribute to the reality of the molecule. Neither one of them is a good story by itself of what SO2 is. Because if it were a good story by itself, we'd have a long bond and a short bond. But we don't see that. We see equivalent bonds where they're about the same size. And it's kind of an averaging out. We have a single bond and a double bond here. You average that out, that's like a bond and a half. We have a single bond here and a double bond here. You average that out, it's like a bond and a half. So it's kind of an averaging out of that. So what are resonance structures by definition? Here you have two or more, you could have more, resonance structures uh, for a single molecule that cannot be depicted by only one Lewis structure alone. Now, yeah, you can write only one Lewis structure, but it is not a good depiction of the molecule. It is really an averaging out of all the ones that you can draw. Now, this is just a... Um, a picture that our textbook author kind of gave in order to think about this. Think about it in terms of a hybrid dog, okay? You take these two dogs and you breed them, you're going to get something that's kind of a hybrid of them. I'm not sure this is the best analogy, but it just gives you something to hang on to. Sulfur dioxide, one story or the other, the real molecule is a, a joining of those two. It's kind of a bond and a half between the sulfur and oxygen is what the depiction of that molecule is. So we're going to do another example here. We're going to do a, a, an example of benzene. Now what you don't know about this molecule, C6H6. So, uh, and they took, it took scientists quite a while to figure out the structure of this molecule. Um, but what they found was that the carbon atoms are actually connected to each other in a ring like this. And each carbon has a hydrogen connected to it. So I'm giving you the connectivity. All right, so there is the connectivity. Then we count up valence electrons. We have six carbons, each has four. That's 24 for that. And hydrogen has uh, one each, so there's six more there. I have 30 to work with, all right? So I start connecting with single bonds. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, keep going, give everybody eight, 24, 26, I want 26, it doesn't matter, 28, 30, I've made these guys happy, all right, but that doesn't work very well. You know what, I'm gonna make it so it's easier for me to do my shifting, I'm gonna move these over here. You wouldn't know to do that, but I'm gonna do that. So I've used 30, I've got three carbons that are happy, three carbons that are sad, uh, don't have their eight, so we'll do some shifting. I'm gonna take these two guys and shift them over here. Okay, now that carbon is happy, but it made this carbon happy, okay? I don't wanna shift this way because this carbon's already happy, but this one wasn't, so I'm gonna take those two and shift them over here, okay? And I'm gonna take these two and not shift them this way because that carbon's, I need to make this carbon happy, and he could do that by shifting over here. So there is a Lewis structure of C6H6, but I could have shifted in a different direction. And any time you have got a Lewis structure that obeys the octet rule, and you've got multiple bonds like this, I have three more extra bonds, if you could find another place to put those three extra bonds that's different than what this is, then that would be a resonance structure or another Lewis structure at least, okay? So I'm going to have to draw all my carbons in the exact same place. That's what it says down there in red. If you're gonna draw a resonance structure, you can't draw these in some kind of different orientation. You need to keep your orientation exactly the same. So I've got my carbon at the peak. I have two carbons over here. I have a carbon at the bottom. I have two carbons over here. This one's a little smaller, but it's at least the same orientation with my hydrogens all around. All right, so I have my hydrogens. 
You see that bottom one down there? Yeah, he's kind of peeking over the edge. And I have my single bonds that I started with. Okay, now what I'm going to do is put those extra two, four, six electrons, those extra three bonds in, but in a different place. So I'm going to put it here and here and here. Now that is two structures where the double bonds are different, but they would have their equivalent. So they're resonance structures of benzene. And this is a very uh, important molecule in organic chemistry. You'll see this one a lot in organic chemistry. And very often the way it is drawn is not with the single and double bonds because, you know, they don't behave as if they have single and double bonds. They behave as if all of those bonds are exactly the same and about a bond and a half. And very often the way they will draw this molecule is not with the bonds, but with a circle in the middle, okay? Um, so this is a very common depiction of that molecule. And you'll get used to eventually seeing, oh, there's no C's and H's written in there, but anytime you see a peak um, where lines come together, there's carbons there, and the hydrogens are there as well. So you will sometimes see in your notes, and especially if you move on to organic chemistry, them drawing this thing being depicted this way, and it is our way of saying these are not really sitting here, and they're not really sitting here, but those six electrons are somewhere moving about in the structure of those six carbon atoms. All right, so now you're going to try one. How many resonance structures can you draw of NO3 minus? Now, what you see there at the bottom right-hand side of your screen is the one that we have done a couple times. We did it in last lesson. Um, we've been in a couple lessons, all right? We've had that uh, Lewis structure, but we can draw more than one. So see how many resonance structures you can draw of that. All right, hopefully you came up with the answer of three, okay? Because what can happen here? Those extra two electrons that made up that bond could either be put between the nitrogen and the top oxygen or to the right or to the left. So we've got that one and we've got the, um, maybe the double bond here with a single bond here, or maybe we have the double bond here with the single bonds here, okay? So we've got uh, filling in electrons all around to make sure everybody has eight and being proper with a minus on the outside. What we have is all of these. So that is three resonance structures. Okay, um, of this same molecule. And what we can do is, of course, put double-headed arrows between them and say, this is actually an average of those three. And one of the questions that it gets asked once we know how many resonance structures we can draw, okay, what kind of bond do I see between the nitrogen and the oxygen? Well, here it's a single, a single, and a double. Here it is the double here and a single here. So if we take a spot and we average it out, a double and two singles, one plus one plus two, a double and two singles, that adds up to four, and we divide it between the number of bonds that we saw. It was a double, a single, and a single. We take that and divide it by three, that's a bond and a third. So we would say that each one of those bonds is a bond and a third. You can either do it like I just showed, or you could do it in one molecule. So we could just look at this molecule and say, how does it average out? We have a single, a single, and a double, a single, a single, and a double. Add that up and divide by how many bond locations you have, and it's a bond and a third. So either way to think about it, it will get you up to the same number. And when you look at the real molecule of NO3 minus, all the bonds are the same length. We don't have two longs and a short. They're all the same length, and they are the expected length of a little bit closer to a single bond than to a double bond. All right, so that is our story about resonance. What it is, you can draw more than one equivalent resonance structure. How it is, the real molecule is a joining of those together and gives you the real story and you can draw multiple Lewis structures, you can figure out the bond uh, length and the bond, what we call the bond order, single bond, double bond, bond and a half between things.